It's time to welcome the Wine Ladies with Georgia and Suzanne. An entertaining hour topped up with great ideas about wine, where to dine, anything and everything to do with the vine. Great conversation, lots of laughter, guests from all walks of life, food and wine, music, art, sports, and much more, all on The Wine Ladies. Hi everybody, it's us, The Wine Ladies. I'm Georgia. And I'm Suzanne, and welcome to The Wine Ladies, one sip at a time. Thanks for joining us here this afternoon. It's great to have you all back with us once again. Now, Suzanne and I are very excited about today's show because we're going to be taking you in a little bit of a different direction today, sort of outside the proverbial box of wine, I guess. We're going to delve into two very different lifestyle products today, one of which is Scotch Whiskey. And actually, women are beginning to enjoy Scotch Whiskey a lot. The trend has really been going up Absolutely. and up with that. As well as scotch is something that has been now uh, paired with food mm -hmm. more and more. Uh, in fact, last week we were thrilled to be invited to the scotch tasting of the, and the introduction of Thor Scotch Whiskey mm -hmm. from Highland Park yep. at the Colburn Lane restaurant. It was a phenomenal evening. We had a fantastic time. And at our table there were three handsome young men. Yes that were part of scotchblog.ca and we actually convinced one of them to join us here this afternoon. A little later on in the show we're going to be welcoming Sean Kirby from scotchblog.ca Ca, who will tell us all about Scotch whiskey. Now that's going to be great. But before we do that, like I mentioned, we're going to venture into yet another a lifestyle product. Now this product is steeped in history, although I don't know if steeped actually is the, yeah, right, it's not the right term to although use for that. Although it is a kind of leaf. Uh, that's true. That's true it is. <laughs> so and that topic is the Cuban cigar. Mm. So we're going to learn all about the history, the culture, the allure of the cigar, and we're actually going to try our hand at, at rolling the cigars ourselves. So I'd like to welcome now Chris Miller. Chris is the owner of Frank Carrenti Cigars Limited, and your family has been in this business for four generations. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. Well, wow. 1900 we uh, originated. Fantastic. From, uh, Copenhagen, Denmark. 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 Yes. Who thinks Denmark. of Denmark when you yeah. think of Cuban cigars? <laughs> How did that happen? Uh, my great grandfather was head of the Cigar Makers Union. Uh, I, one of the earliest records I have at our at our business is his Union Ledger okay. from 1915. Wow! So in Copenhagen. How, in Copenhagen. Copenhagen. I think they still have uh, one of the oldest cigar factories in in Europe called wow. Enoble. Enoble. Yeah, and they're still around today, over 100 years. Wow! So was Denmark known as one of the countries that way that 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 had cigar manufacturing, or or did every country sort of do a little bit? Of I it? think it was it was widespread everywhere okay. at the time, especially North America. North America, Boston alone had about 4,000 cigar makers in 1900. Wow. Yeah, really? New York City probably had uh, 45. And it's, you know, a di it's dying, unions, you were saying, unions. isn't it? Yeah, well, it's, a, it's, you know, it's times have changed. Mm -hmm. uh, cigars kind of got left behind. A lot yes. of people, you know, you know, if you look at old antique shops, you'll always see cigar signs or cigar boxes and stuff like that. And it's always true. in the movies, the gentlemen would always retire to the drawing room for First, their cognac exactly. and cigars while the ladies did their needle, needlepoint. Exactly, yeah. You know, and well, I'm glad that wasn't my time, that's <laughs> for <Yeah>. sure. <laughs> that's right, yeah. Actually, do you, I actually have a purse... That, remember, I have like a beautiful purse, and it is in the shape of a cigar box, oh, that's and it has a cigar on it, and I've had it for about 10, 12 years, and I only pull it out at certain times, and every time I do, actually, everybody always comments, what a fabulous purse. Yes, it's unique. There's so it many is. different cigar companies that had so many different cigar boxes made. Uh-huh. All right, so actually, Toronto had one of the, one of the oldest, uh, uh, I can't remember what they're called, youthographers? Something like to, that made all the designs for the boxes. Oh, okay. I remember uh, a couple of years back when my son was about ten or eleven years old. We went to a to Cuba uh -huh. on a on a uh, holiday, and of course I was trying to be cool. And I remember I don't smoke, but of course I had to try an authentic Cuban <laughs> cigar, one of those and one of those large ones like you have yeah, yeah. here. And I, it took hours to smoke. Of course, yeah. <laughs> well, the process of cigar making, you know, is very. Uh, the longer the filler, the cooler the draw, the slower it burns. Wow, I like that. We're going to quote you on yeah. that. <laughs> what, makes a, what makes a good cigar, actually? What are some of the variables that contribute to that? A uh, cigar should be 100% natural and handmade. That's, that's the first choice. Uh, long fillers, which are full leaves inside the cigar. Oh, okay. Make it, like I said, cool, burn cool and slow. 
um, fermentation of the of the leaf. There's nothing added to it but water. Uh huh. So it's just the different ages that the leaves have been have been sitting for. Oh, okay. All right. So a very young leaf is very oily, uh, higher in nicotine, right? Uh huh. And uh, and uh, it smells very earthy, as opposed to an older leaf. It, it's it's much more mellow. Oh. So is that more desirable? The, the older. Yeah, it's leaf like wine. Yeah. Right. Okay. It, it, it ages like wine. Nice. Like a nice woman. Too. Exactly. <laughs> well, you got it. Now, what about uh, the tobacco plant? How long does it take to grow from start to finish? And do does it keep coming back, or do you have to replant it's, it's, it? Or it's a season thing, uh -huh. right? Uh, my dad and my brother go down and and. Uh, they're there. They know. They know more about that end yeah. than me, right? I know how to blend a cigar and, and make a cigar and prepare the leaves, mm -hmm. but the actual uh, plantation, like the growing stages, I'm not too, too keen on. I know. I understand. There's only a few privileged individuals that get to actually go to Cuba and select the bales of leaf that they that they want to import for their cigars. And your fa your family yeah. is one of those few. Yeah, we we did. We've done that for many years. Many years, yeah. Some of our tobacco is 30 years old, aged 30 years, because wow. we, we age it here for a long time. So show us how you make a cigar. Sure. Take I'm us actually, through the process. Yeah, I'm just going to be putting the finishing wrapper on. These are bunches. These were pre-made in the factory before I came. Okay. This looks very old, this piece of wood yeah, here. Yeah, mold, mold's been around, I think, I think they were invented in uh, North America, right? And uh, 1860s. Was this is, this is about 100 time. years old? Wow. This, this, this one, not specifically. The oldest one we have in our factory is over, well over 100 years. All right. So, um, but this one's probably about the 50s, I'd say. So they made our plastic changed, now. you were saying. Like, the tech, the, like no. you were saying, the way they used to make a cigar is still the way they make a good cigar. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nothing, it was perfected 200 years ago. There's no okay. need to change it, right? right. So this is, a this, is, this is a tobacco leaf here? Yes, this is a full leaf. All right. This is about eight-year-old Cuban leaf. Okay. So it's a wrapper. It looks like leather. Yeah, it actually Matthew? feels like leather. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. Ah. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can see the leaf. You can see the um, the stem. Yeah, the stem. All yeah, all leaves have to be destemmed. Right? Okay. So we so take, take the, the stem up. out. Okay. Mm hmm. Now, are, are a lot of these cigars that are being made now not being handmade? They're being they're being machine made. I guess it's obviously much cheaper. Well, yeah. A lot of cigars now are machine made or paper made, paper pressed, flavored. You know oh, what I mean? They're okay. they're not really cigars. Uh huh. All right. So now you're stretching the leaf. Yep. Mm hmm then? Actually, Cuba they train about eight months to a year to learn how to, to make a cigar. To become a Cuba uh, to be yeah. a cigar wow. roller. Yep. And it is a profession, right? It's something you you, you keep forever. Mm -hmm. Yes. So like my grandfather taught. A few uh, cigar rollers in our factory 30 years ago, they're still here today. Wow. So, yeah. Now, can people, um, do you ship your cigars all, all over the world, or wh how do people get the, uh, the cigars from you guys? Well, we're, we're pretty exclusive, mm -hmm. so we don't mm -hmm. sell to stores or anything. You have to kind of uh -huh. come and find us. Oh, okay. right. But I understand there's a lot of celebrities that enjoy your cigars as well. Yeah, well, we do a lot for movies because we're custom makers, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, we made cigars for Brad Pitt. Uh, Will Smith. Mm -hmm. Brad Pitt wanted 20% nicotine-free herbs in his cigar for the assassination of Jesse James. <laughs> so, yeah, and that was I think I that was 2007. Yeah. Hmm. So when you said you do the blending, you do the blending of. So, are there different kinds of leaves that go in? Is that what you mean when you say yeah. you do the blend? Well, the leaves, the, their flavors come from from where they are on the tobacco plant, uh -huh. how long they've been aged for, how thick the leaf is. Okay. Right. So there's three types of long filler that we use: seco, lejero, and velado, and those are just different different strengths filler. I see. But they're okay. full leaves, just like just like that, right? Uh huh. Okay. So it's like when somebody's blending a, a great Bordeaux. That's how much it. Merlot? How much Cab Franc? How exactly. much Cab so Now, if you if you have cigars that are dipped in in wine or rum, or is it is it the leaves that are are uh, fermented in that, or how does it work? Like where uh, like where's the process? If you like, if you purchase a store bought flavor no, cigar. No, like if you wanted to do something with a flavor, how would you do that? Where would that be incorporated into the uh, cigar making process? We've never uh, made cigars with any flavors. Oh, you don't do that, okay. No. But I think they soak the, the leaves in it. Oh, I see. Right, uh -huh. uh, like in sugars and, and stuff see. like that, yeah. Is that just, that's just water you're, you're using to? Yeah, this is like a, a water-based resin. It's okay. been used for cigars for 200 years. Oh. So it's organic. Okay. 
Yeah. So how long does it take a typical? How long does it take to typically make a cigar? And what kind of cigar is this? I know they have mistos and fatsos, or actually maybe it's something called a fatso. <laughs> <laughs> Different kinds of names for the cigars. Yeah, um, this cigar is a robusto. Robusto. Uh, robusto. Robusto. Yeah. Robusto. Uh, okay. It's pretty popular now. Okay. So, so, um, the Partagas Series D, I think, was rated the number one cigar. And it's, it's equivalent to that, oh. the same size. And how much does one of those cigars sell for? In our factory, we sell these at wholesale for eleven fifty a piece. Okay. And it burns for probably about 45 wow, that's minutes. that's not expensive. Okay. Yeah, that's factory price, reasonable. yeah. Uh, retail, probably about $20, 20 okay. if you were to sell retail. But like I said, we're custom, right? And it's four hours about, you say, that, that you can smoke the cigar? Uh, Is that what you said? It's about 40, mi 45 oh, 40 minutes. 40 minutes. 45 40 minutes, minutes to sorry. an hour, yeah. Oh, I've got to. Oh, I've got to okay. hold one okay. of those. Just yeah, sure. Is there a special way to hold the cigar? Yeah, that's what, uh, yeah. How do you hold them properly? Uh, you can hold it any way you like, but a cigar is not like a cigarette, so you don't take pulls, right? Okay. You you keep it. You flavor the smoke and the tobacco. Oh. So if you ever see like old movies and stuff, they always have the cigar in their mouth. Yes. Yeah, right? they just leave it there. Exactly. It's like, aren't, don't you want to take a break? That's what, yeah. It's not. <laughs> mm, that smells yeah. quite good, does it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's 100% organic. Nothing yeah. added to that, mm. but water. I Actually, you know what? I can't stand the smell of cigarettes. But sometimes when you're in a you walk into a room and you have that you see the a folks cigar? like smoking the cigars. I don't know. There's something kind of this smells kind of good and kind of sexy. I think. In a way. <laughs> I don't know. Like that's that's isn't that sort of part of the the whole thing about cigars? I mean, they kind of like rugged and kind of sexy and you know. Yeah, you know what? Right recently, like yeah, very very much so. You see it around everywhere. All the all the big shots have a cigar in their mouth. You know. Yeah. 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 For so. Sure. Okay. Now, what about pairing that with a uh, glass of scotch? We've actually brought here today Canadian Club uh, Dock Number no. 57, and uh, this is uh, about 150 years old. This this company, and uh, this is a, a new product, and it's a spiced whiskey, and it's mm -hmm. and it's uh, named after apparently Dock 57, which was during Prohibition, where the all the illegal whiskey was shipped out of uh -huh. into the states so um, you're not telling any tales that, that they no, don't already know you're not going to get anybody in trouble there no no it was in the press kits so oh okay safe. good we're all safe that's <laughs> all good so why don't we uh, toast cigar making sure. and Right. And would this be a good um, a good sample to go like whiskeys are often enjoyed with cigars right? yeah any yeah okay absolutely mm. it's a choir taste it's it nice is though. You, and that's you not so bad. Actually, that's pretty good, I yeah. have to say. I'm not like a real whiskey gal, but I don't know. I guess it's got that nice sweetness, a little bit of the caramel in there. And yeah, yeah, you really the taste cinnamon, it. kind of, and yeah. a bit of the oak. It tastes good. Yeah. It's nice. And it's a unique name, too. I like, I like that. The Doc Prohibition. 57? Yeah, where they smuggled all the, all the booze. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. But you were saying you prefer a glass of uh, wine with yeah, you smoke I, a cigar. Yeah, that's, that's my personal, uh, personal preference, though. Yeah. But cognac, I'd say, is probably the number one drink to have with cigars. Uh huh. Yeah. Now you guys are the. I think you guys are the only ones that actually make in Canada handmade cigars, or is that is that true? Uh, or, we're the only ones others? that manufacture handmade Cuban cigars Cuban in North cigars. America. Yeah. Okay. Oh, in North so, America. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, there is a, one other uh, cigar manufacturer in Toronto, mm -hmm. but I think they're machine-made cigars. Uh huh. And people so. hire you guys like to come in and do cigar rolling demonstration demonstrations and that kind of thing. So yeah. we're, we're we're all over the city doing private functions for for brides and, and grooms, stags, uh -huh. uh, corporate parties, golf tournaments, stuff like that. So if someone wants to get in touch with you, how do we do, how do they do that? Uh, they could call us at our factory, talk to our uh, event coordinator Lillian at four one six five zero four four one zero eight. Okay. So is there anything else you'd like to tell our viewers about cigars or? Uh, you know what? I think I pretty much told all there is to tell. Okay. All right. Uh, they have to come into the factory and talk to me personally if they want to know anything more, right? Okay. Awesome. So. Well, thanks for coming in there, Chris. My pleasure. That was very interesting. Maybe yeah. after the show, I'll try my hand at rolling a cigar. Yeah, yeah. Roll, yeah. <laughs> I mean, how long does it take to learn how to do it properly? I know I'm a quick study, but I'm not that good. No. Yeah, I think it probably about... You get it going in after a few months, but okay. to be, a, you know, considered a uh, professional cigar smoker, it takes about six months to a year. And I wouldn't want to waste all that, like, really prized raw material that you guys bring in over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All, all right. right, well, thank you very much. My and, pleasure. Uh, toast. Toast. Toast again. All right. To Scott, which is coming up next. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Thank you.